Hello, GPSs. Like this one here on this uh, quad. Beta flight quad, nothing special. If you've got a GPS in the last three to five years, odds on it probably contains uh, what's called a U-Blox M8 chip. It's the, the chip that does the, sort of the processing. It's different from the sort of antenna. And it seems to work fairly well. You stick it outside, the cold star eventually gets there and afterwards it, it gets sat a bit quicker. But there is a new version of the U-Blox chip. It's called the M10. And I've got one here from Rush FPV. And well, I'd, I'd say it looks like this, but you can't tell, but it looks very similar because it's just got, you know, an antenna on top. The internals are different. Now I've heard that the M10 is essentially better. It's more sensitive, it can pick up sats quicker, it's uh, better in interference, and I, I wanted to check it out because um, I seem to live in an area which is very bad for satellites. When I put a quad like this outside, it gets maybe five or six sats. Inside the house, zero, absolutely nothing. And I think that's due in part to the area and due in part that quads have a lot of gubbins there. They've got a lot of electronics going on and all that sort of stuff can interfere. If I put like uh, one of my planes outside, like the uh, Mini Talon that I was messing with in the last few weeks, that does pick up sats in the house. And I think that's the separation of the GPS. So I thought it'd be interesting to see if I use a quad like this, I can test it outside in the garden, inside in the house, see what we get, and then pop this one on instead and see what the difference could be. And this could tell us, is this massively better than this or not? Or is it quite similar? Well, I don't know, let's find out, see. This Rush FPV GPS comes with a connector that will fit into like Rush FPV boards and a solder point on the other end. So I just had to rearrange these for my quad so they, they would go around the other way. And that would then plug in a little thing I had in this particular flight controller. On the GPS end, as I said, it, it's just got solder points to, to go into, so that should be pretty easy for anybody to do. Okay, we're in the garden. I've got my quad here, and you'll notice it's got both GPSs on. And what I've tried to do is wire them and take the wires around the same sort of route. So currently, this is the M8, and that's plugged in. This is the new M10, and that's not plugged in. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this down, plug it in, and we'll time how long this takes to do a cold start, and then how long that does to do a cold start. Uh, and the way I'm gonna monitor that, I'm gonna turn on this radio with its telemetry. And what we've got, we've got a section here that says the time, number of sats, and the RX battery. But no, we're not, because it's just started raining. <laughs> Welcome to November in England. It was looking fine. I thought I had a window and then it's raining, but maybe it'll stop again. Let's find out. Okay, the rain has stopped. I've got my landing mat out because it's very uh, wet now. So yeah, I'm gonna use telemetry here. I do have um, an FPV monitor as well, just to back up. But essentially, we'll be looking to see how long it takes to get a fix uh, inside and then once we've got a fix, I don't know, sometimes I only get five sats on this, so we'll see. Um, once I've done that, we'll try it inside and see what we get. So, first thing to do, it's 16.25 on that. I'm gonna plug this in. And zero sats, RX battery. So, telemetry is working. Just going to put that <laughs> kind of where I can see it. And we've got the quad just there. Hopefully my VTX won't overheat. It's only on 25 milliwatts, so it's on low power. But uh, we'll see what we get. Okay, we've bounced up to four sats after about two minutes, which is pretty good actually, not bad at all for this. Let's see if it's gonna go any higher. Up to five. That is sometimes it for this quad, but let's see. But yeah, I would call that a pretty successful cold start for this one because it's normally, I can go in the field and we can sit around for a long time. We're up to six, ooh, heady heights of six. Give it another few minutes, see if it's going to get up higher. Eight? Wowzers! 
This is the best this has ever done. Amazing. Just gonna give it till like maybe half past and see if we get any more sats. Although eight is, is pretty good. You can fly an eight for sure. Okay, so we've got to 16.30 and we've got eight sats. Doesn't look like it's gonna increase. As I said, that is very good for down here. When I get flying, I get usually sort of 10 to 12, depending on the sort of quad. So let's do the following now. I'm gonna unplug this battery. I'm gonna unplug. Sensor last. Yep, that's me. Last. I'm gonna unplug the M8, plug in the M10, and we'll see what that can do. And this one hasn't it got powered on just to make sure it was connected, right? So GPS came up and did flight. But that's about it. So okay. We're turning on there. Telemetry recovered. It's freaking out. And at the moment it's still saying SATS 8 from the last update so hopefully we should get some telemetry through there yeah that's better now we're down to zero sats so okay so turned on just before 431 so let's see how we do and this one's most definitely a cold start because we haven't used it at all I said it was briefly powered on for about five seconds and that's just to make sure that the GPS light came on in beta flight and that's to make sure that I had TX and RX around the right way. Oh, we're up to four. That was pretty quick for a cold star, I have to admit. Five. I like it so far. Is it going to get more than the other one? Is it sensitive enough? We're up to seven. Well, it's certainly done this quicker. This is just, I'd say under two minutes to, ooh, nine. We've got ahead. We've pulled ahead on the M10. Good old M10. What can it do? Can it go higher? Higher than a nine. So I'm just gonna give it a few more minutes to see if we've got any more movement above nine, basically. Yeah, we're up to 10. This is a new record in the garden. We'll give it until uh, 16.35, which gives it just under five minutes to 11. Yeah, it's still going up. Yes, I can definitely say this is better. The last one was definitely stuck at eight and didn't move. We're now up to 11 in a shorter time span. 12. I didn't think it was gonna go higher. Okay, so it's 16.35, we've got 12 sats. So, so far, this guy is outperforming that guy by, you know, extra 50% worth of satellites for the same area, which is pretty intense. So, I'm going to take this inside. I'm going to see if we get any signal inside. Normally, I would expect nothing. So, we're going to repeat it, do the M8, then do the M10, see what the difference is. Inside the house, it's a lot more straightforward. Neither of them were able to get a single satellite from my office, which is absolutely par for the course in most things. Now I thought that was it for this video, but I happened to check in Betaflight just to make sure there were no weird things in there. And I noticed that I had to use Galileo off. And Galileo is a another set of satellites and you will generally get more satellites if you use it. Now I wasn't sure if the M8 supported this, but I saw it on the back of the M10. So I thought I'd better enable this. Ground assistant type, I don't think it's supported, but I decided to set it for auto detect. And I went out and had another go in the garden. And this is where the results took a bit of a turn. Uh, it's the next day, so I didn't consider that a warm start. And we sort of waited just under a minute and it got to the four sats. And then a minute and a half, it got to five. And that's pretty much in line with what it was doing. Uh, and then two minutes in, it got to seven. I thought, well, this is pretty good. Um, but then it just started going up. So two minutes 30, it went to nine, which beat the previous record by quite a bit and I was like oh this is uh, this is pretty amazing why didn't I have this turn on before but it kept going 247 it got to 10 sats three and a half minutes it hit 11 then it jumped up to 13 at just under four minutes and I was just about to turn it off and say it's had its five minutes and it hit 14 and then while I was just talking to the camera and pointing at it it hit 15 admittedly this is sort of an extra minute but this uh this is more than this uh, gps normally picks up 
Well, given that the M8 did so well, I was looking pretty excited to what the M10 would do, and it got to eight satellites pretty quickly. Then up to nine, 10, and we're still just inside a minute and a half here. And we're up to 11 in under two minutes. But from this point on, it just kind of stopped. So after five minutes, it just sat there at 11. Uh, and hadn't moved, which was a big shock. And in fact, as I was pointing to it and sort of talking to the camera, which I haven't included, it dropped back to 10, although it recovered back to 11. But this is this is weird. It didn't do as well as it, it did last time without the Galileo turned on. Not quite the results I was expecting there. When we didn't have uh, Galileo enabled, we got not as many sets from there, not as quick, and more sets from there quicker, which is what I expected. When I enabled Galileo, I expected the same sort of thing. More satellites uh, on this one, but more satellites and quicker on this one. And we kind of got a bit of an odd result. So with Galileo turned on, this got to 15, and this only reached 11, which is less than it had previously. I guess the only thing that I noticed in both cases is how quickly it acquired the satellites. Um, if we looked at the time this did hit, uh, 10 satellites compared to when this hit 10 satellites, this did it twice as quickly, which is good. Quite why it had that problem there, I don't know. It kind of goes against what everybody else has mentioned about uh, M10s being very quick to, to get a lock and getting more sats. In this case, it was quick to get a lock, but it didn't get more sats for some reason. I don't know why. Um, atmospheric conditions shouldn't really affect GPS that much. They're on a completely different frequency than uh, you know, our 5.8 stuff, which is obviously a problem with uh, clouds with moisture layer. This is uh, a much lower frequency, so it shouldn't have it, but who knows? Anyway, a weird result there, but I, I kind of like the fact that it locks in very quickly. Uh, and these seem to be the future now. The, the M8s are being replaced by the M10 anyway, but if you've already got an M8, I don't think there's any reason to rush out and grab something. I guess the only thing that might be interesting if if you've got an M8 which is perhaps getting interference from your wiring or your digital VTX. It'd be very interesting to see how an M10 does against that. And I'll be uh, checking that out in a later video when I rebuilt my Chimera. Um, this is the big quad that crashed and broke some motors. I've got some new motors and I've also got the, the M10 GPS that I fly, uh, supplied with that one to replace the, the old M8 one. So that'd be interesting because that that always had a bit of a problem holding a lock, it seemed, when I was flying it around. The only other thing to check is your version of Betaflight to use the M10 with. Now, this was developed to use with 4.5, got backported into 4.4 to use with auto configuration. You may still be able to use it in previous versions of Betaflight, but you might have to go into the, the special uBlock software called uCenter and do some changes manually on your GPS before you can use it. So just be wary of that. Uh, going forward though, this should be supported. Hopefully 4.5 will come out soon as well because 4.4 seems to be have its its own sort of problems. But um, lots of people just report they just plug it in and it works. And it kind of depends. Some of them are, are backwards compatible with M8 as well and some aren't. It seems a bit varied, but worth checking out, certainly. If you're having problems getting like a fast lock sometimes like I do then uh, this might save you just sitting on the ground waiting hoping it will hurry up and do something. There are lots of them available this particular one's from Rush FPV as mentioned we're kindly supplied by Bangor so thanks to them there'll be some links down below but yeah there's there's, there's a bunch of them coming and uh, I think the more will be coming and I the M8 will probably sort of disappear but uh, yeah that's the video for today. A little bit weird on the results, but hopefully helpful. I don't know what the results are going to be. I, I, I expected a certain thing and got a slightly different result, but there you go. Anyway, hope this video has been helpful and I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.